anxietycenter.com. Yeah, so I, I just wanted to know, like a few years back, maybe about three years ago, I started having what, what is like repetitive singing, but it's not just like three days. It's literally like all day. It started all day, all night. And I was like, uh, I was a dancer. So every time I would hear a song, I just, or anything, when I hear music, it started just repeating and it lasted for a year and then it went away and then it's come back. And um, I'm just, I'm just wondering because anytime I hear a song or even if I think of a song, it'll just get stuck in my head. And it's not just for like a few days. Mm -hmm. It's literally like a week, two weeks straight all day, unless I'm like focused on something else. But um, is this, is this from anxiety is, and if it is, how can I tell if my brain is hyperstimulated? Like (laughs) what's causing this? I, I don't, it's kind of like making me feel like, okay, do I have control over this? Is this something I'm going to have for the rest of my life? Right. Yeah. I've just never heard of this being part of anxiety. Mm. Like since I've never heard of anyone having this kind of symptom. So it's, mm. I feel all alone. Okay, sure. It is a common symptom and it's referred to as earworms. What happens when our stress goes up, the brain changes how it functions. Uh, certain parts of the brain increase in activity and certain parts decrease. Uh, they're also finding, too, that um, there's certain chemicals that change balance in the brain. Uh, for example, glutamate goes up. Glutamate is a neural exciter. It's responsible for excitation of the nervous system. And GABA is the opposite. It's the inhibitory neurotransmitter, and it reduces. So we have parts of the brain that increase in activity and parts of the brain that decrease. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. when stress goes up, that increase can cause rapid thinking, rapid thought, stuck thoughts, and reduces our ability to shut them off. Because, uh, real quick over, in fact, we're actually putting a video together on this at this very moment about how stress can do all these things. But really quickly, when stress goes up, uh, the mm-hmm. parts of the brain that sort of trigger on repetitive thoughts and earworms and maladies and, and you know, uh, images and so on and so forth, that goes up. So that just gets hyperactive and it can generate these things all day long, whether we want them or not. And then the cortex, the executive function part of the brain that allows us to shut these off, it becomes diminished. So it it doesn't have the same capacity to reduce these types of thoughts. So what happens when the fear center of the brain increases in activity, then the electrical signals become more prevalent. So we get a lot more thought processes. This is where the you know stuck thoughts can come from. We get, you know, Increasing thoughts, intrusive thoughts, and unwanted thoughts, all those things can go up. Then our ability to shut them off comes down. So then we get this repetitive loop happening in our head day after day. And it's solely caused by elevated stress. Now, how can you tell if your stress is up or if your body's hyperstimulated? Well, we have a test at our website on the public pages under hyperstimulation. Just go and you know go through that test and find out where your hyperstimulation level is at. You can also take some of our stress tests that'll give you another rough idea in terms of where your body's at. And if if you're in the moderate and above range of hyperstimulation, yeah, this happens to a lot of people. It's not as rare as you'd like to think. In fact, I used to struggle with that constantly, and I still do at some times when I let my stress get above the range that I normally let it. Now, being a musician, I really don't care. I just ignore it, and they fade away, and as I get my stress down, they dissolve into the background, and that's the end of it. But it is super common, and especially for people who are musical. Now, some people might have a thought that gets stuck or a mental image that gets stuck or an impression that gets stuck that just cycles and cycles and cycles. Some people have fears that cycle over and over again. Again, all common indications of elevated stress and how the body has changed its function in response. So it's not harmful. A lot of people experience it. Uh, but And it is annoying because sometimes the brain just... You know, even when we go to sleep, it seems it shuts off while we sleep. And the minute we wake up, it's right back again. Common thing. But again, that's a good indication of where your level of stress is at. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. It shuts down at night and then I wake up and then boom. But is it, can it also be due to, because I'm pregnant, um, I'm 10 weeks pregnant. And since I've been pregnant, literally, I've been extremely sensitive and it seems like my like certain symptoms have come back just sure. during pregnancy and it, it I'm scared to even like 
because of, you know, I love working out. I love listening to music. Those are my favorite things, but because of the repetitive singing and then the ringing in the ear, I'm so afraid to work out. I'm so afraid to get back because I'm thinking, oh, it's the workouts because maybe I'm working out too hard or, yeah. oh my God, it's the loudspeakers that it's the ringing in the ear. And I've just been so scared of things that I actually love to do because I'm, I'm so confused and overwhelmed that, oh, it can be caused by overworking out or, and I don't know if I'm overworking out, you know, yeah. and it, it, it's just all these symptoms I'm feeling and, and I'm stressing because I am working with a therapist, mm -hmm. um, through anxiety center and mm -hmm. it, it's helping a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's certain things that, um, you know, she told me to cut down like caffeine and I haven't been able to function. So, um, I've been like just drinking black tea just to even mm. get by the day. Sure. But it's sure. my symptoms have escalated and I haven't had high of amount of caffeine, but it, I feel like I can't even function throughout the day. But it can also be because I'm pregnant. Yeah. And all these things are just I feel like they've been escalating. But um, yeah. I guess bringing the hyperstimulation down and working on all of the, you know, the work that she'll be giving me. I believe soon then should be helping the, the brain calm down. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, first off, congratulations on your pregnancy. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and yes, it can contribute to this because when you look at hyperstimulation, hyperstimulation essentially means, you know, what the word says, the nervous system has become hyperstimulated. It's overly stimulated. Workouts can keep the body overly stimulated, especially if you're already hyperstimulated doing a rigorous workout, which is a lot of fun. It still increases the body's metabolism and it stirs up the nervous system. So you got that contributing. And then being pregnant, you have hormone shifts going on, which is stressing the body and causing other hormones to change and shift and adjust as your body adjusts. So you have a lot of things all going on that can contribute to this. Now, do you have to be afraid of it? No. Just recognize what's going on. Your body's doing it. And, uh, you know, if you have a melody running in your head, you know, you can indulge in it. You don't have to worry about it. There's nothing wrong with you mentally. It's just what your body's doing in response to the combination of all of the changes that you're going through. I've had those things off and on for years. You know, again, being a musician, I used to write music uh, years and years ago, so melodies would stick with me anyways. Uh, I just ignore them, right? and I just say, yeah, I guess my stress is up. I have that melody playing for the last three days. <laughs> okay, and so just, I guess with... Um pregnancy and and you know with me being hyperstimulated the best thing is just not to worry about it and just to kind of keep going by my day like I normally do and is it is it what's causing is it reacting to my thoughts could that make the or like changing the way I react to my thoughts could that make it disappear could that kind of make it just fade away it can because if we make you know the whether the melody or the repetitive or stuck thought in fact we just po posted a article and members there today about dealing with stuck thoughts but if we make them into a big deal like it's something we don't like we don't want it anymore we're trying to push it away well us making it into a big deal becomes a big deal so that's then where our mind goes oh i can't have this and why am i having it anymore what if i never get rid of it so we just make it into something that it doesn't need to be if we just recognize this is what my body's doing because it's stimulated oh well i don't really care and just move on then our lack of caring also takes the significance out of it and it will fade into the background too so it's, it's the, you know, as we mentioned, it's a combination. Typically, stress will cause it, but then our worrisome behavior usually keeps it going because then worry stresses the body, right? So we get that cycle going. So the best thing to do is just say, yeah, well, whatever, never mind, and just get on with your day. Okay. Well, thank you for clarifying that for me. I know we had spoken about it um, a few years back, and then it went away. <laughs> Thanks yeah. to you, it did go away. And <laughs> yeah. then it just came back out of nowhere since I've been pregnant. So I'm like, what? Did I not clear it? Is there some, <laughs> an underlying problem that I, that I haven't solved? I mean, what's going on? But I have been um, really stressed. So, um, I mean, I guess, yeah. yeah, I guess that just makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And if you just use those repetitive thoughts as an indication that your stress is up and, and nothing more than that, then again, we don't give them any more significance and they do fade in and out and we just really don't care about too much of them. So and with that, we see it lots. I've seen it lots through the years that I've you know coached with people. It's really nothing to be ever concerned about. It's just another indication of stress is up. 
Okay. And if I just do like maybe like moderate workouts, like, you know, jogging, dancing, um, a little bit of lift, weight lifting, not, not harsh. Cause obviously I'm pregnant too. I can't be doing that. And then right. maybe just sticking to black tea just because it does get me through, through the day with, can I still overcome my symptoms? You can, um, you know, your pregnancy is going to probably, you know, have a lot of fun with you <laughs> just because of how the body adjusts. <laughs> and so just, just expect your body to be up and down. And sometimes there might not be any rhyme or reason why. It's just part of what the body does in preparation. Uh, so, again, I wouldn't, you know, put too much emphasis on it and, and be concerned about it. Because, you know, once you've delivered and you have your little one at home and you've had some time to settle down, your body will adjust downwards again. And then all of this will fade away as well. So uh, as long as you're pregnant, yeah, you can expect anything. Uh, if you are if you are hyperstimulated, and it sounds like you are, especially if you've been through some stress. And, of course, the pregnancy is stressful too. I mean, not mentally stressful. And, and it could be that too as well. But physically stressful for sure, all of those things will contribute to these, you know, symptoms. So if you're doing, if you want to exercise, I encourage you that you do that, but keep it to the moderate level. And you might want to space out your reps uh, instead of trying to do them, you know, all, all at once, maybe take a little bit more time through your workouts. So you give your body enough time to gear up and gear down. Because um, exercise is a, a stimulator. It uh, not only increases the body's metabolism, but also stirs up the nervous system. And Whereas hyperstimulation hits the nervous system. So uh, it will be difficult for you to become symptom-free during this time, especially based on the pregnancy. But again, most of our harm comes from worrying about our symptoms. Uh, but if you just recognize, yeah, my body's doing this, and yeah, I might have symptoms for that, and this will all fade away after you know we're home and the baby's home and everything else, then you don't have to stress about this stuff, right? Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, a very common thing which we're outlining in the video is that when our stress goes up, our symptoms come up. And then as worrisome people, we start to worry about our symptoms and keep our stress up. That's why they stick. So the best thing we can do is just identify those symptoms of symptoms of stress. I'm going to get my stress down and forget about everything else. Your body will gear down in time if you give it the opportunity. So it's not something we have to worry about. And then, of course, you know, if you don't want stress to be an issue, then we want to work on our underlying factors. So we don't want to make anxiety disorder into a thing that it isn't. Like it's not this great big monster we often, you know, hear, hear people talking about. And the way I felt about it too in the early days, it's just stress, combination of stress and worry. And if we deal with both of those things, the whole problem melts away. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're more than welcome. <laughs> Good luck with the rest of your day. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Okay.